Mohammed is one of South Africa's best rally drivers, private two rally drivers, and um, a few questions for you. Um, first of all, how long have you been in rally? Um, this year will be my third full year. I did a half a year in 2005, just learning with my third full year. End of this year will be my third full year. What attracted you to rally driving? What's the big draw? Uh, I grew up on a farm, um, and the old total rally used to run through the farm. And, the and uh, it was just basically the sound of the cars that in the middle of the night that, you know, that got my interest up. And then when I was a little bit older, then I would go and spectate. And when I started driving, I'd try and emulate the guys going through. And then, you know, that was good. I've always wanted to rally my whole life. It was just, it was always money that was the, the, the big thing. And that's what keeps most people out of rally. It's the financial implications and uh, the cost factor. So how, how are you actually find, finding yourself at this point? Um, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to, have, to run a successful business and I've been able to afford it. Uh, I could afford to, to buy my, my first rally car and get myself noticed. Mm -hmm. uh, after my first season, I was one of the few drivers that won a race overall in this first season and that led to my sponsorship from Total and Toyota. Uh, 2006, uh, for my first full year national rally, and uh, basically my two main sponsors were Toyota and Toyota. I've been with them ever since. Uh, my first rally car was a uh, Toyota Rhinox in M3, Group M3, um, which is a near standard car, but very difficult car to drive. And once you master it, it's, it makes driving other cars much easier. So, yeah, this year I'm rallying in A6, and uh, uh, essentially. The plan was to have the Aorus in the beginning of the year, but that's been delayed, so yeah, that's where it's done. Speaking of the Aorus, what, what has been causing the delays with that? Um, this is the first Aorus that's been manufactured uh, for rally in South Africa, uh, in my class, and if I stand corrected, uh, probably in the world. And every component of the car had to be planned from scratch and then manufactured, and sometimes it worked out, sometimes it didn't work out. And sometimes parts had to be remanufactured, so it's been a process, a, a very, very long, drawn-out development process. But uh, from what I've seen, the car is going to be absolutely awesome. It's, 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 it's an amazing car. It's, it's built brilliantly. Uh, it's, it, the, the, the stance looks right. The attitude looks right. It seems like it's going to be a great car. So you're looking forward to racing it. When is the next race? Uh, In fact, we've got a race. It's next weekend, which is the 15th. Of August, uh, we will be rallying in Barkley East. It's the Osram Rally. Okay. Uh, Barkley East area, and yeah, it's uh, essentially a, a, a mountain rally, and it's, it's got a fearsome reputation because the drops are absolutely huge. Uh, you, if you go over the side, they say there's enough time to phone home and, <laughs> and greet them before you land at the bottom. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's a scary rally. Um, I'm just concerned that they haven't done enough to go up into testing on the car to, to go into such a, a challenging rally. But I will take it as a part. How does running your own business and being a rally driver, I mean, you obviously don't have, have as much time as a full-time rally driver. Does it affect your driving at all, or do you feel it's um, now that you're on my only, my only, uh, The only downside is I don't have enough testing that I'm done. I mean, most of the testing is done on the rally and development work is done on the rally. So it's a situation where we, that, that's a disadvantage that we have against the full-time world drivers. Uh, the other thing is having the, 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 the I'm fortunate enough where I'm, I'm very well backed by Toyota and we've got the, the technical backing behind. But being a true privateer, you don't have the, the technical backup of, of, of uh, an infrastructure like Toyota Motorsport and that makes it much more difficult to, uh, you don't have the, 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 the equipment that, you know, that the factory drivers have and that, that puts you in a disadvantage. Now being a privateer, uh, do you have a, a navigator that you always work with or is it kind of like... Uh, a navigator is like a, uh, like a life partner, I would put it. It's, it's, it's a relationship that you have to build up, you have to build up trust and, um, and it takes a lot of commitment from, from both parties to, to make it work. Um, I've only ever had two navigators, my, my second one started being here this year. And for the first couple of rallies, it, it took uh, time for us to, 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 to find each other, and uh, it came together on, on the Sassel rally this year, we won the class, and it's been good ever since, um, but, but it definitely does take time to, to, to build up that trust. Trust is a, is a big factor, you're going over a, 
in blind press in 180 k's an hour, and yeah. if he tells you it's max pressed, you may believe him and you keep your foot down. It's, so yeah, trust is, is, is a major factor. Awesome. Now the latest car you've acquired is an Toyota Corolla. Um, what are your thoughts on that? The, the plan was to run the Corolla just for one event while the Aorus was being built, and one became two, and two became three, and three became four. Four rallies have become five now. The, the Corolla is an awesome car. It's, it's one of the best rally cars in Toyota I've got. Um, it's, it's brilliant. It handles beautifully. It's, it's forgiving. Coming out of the, the, the run when which is a, a very difficult car to drive, and or not a very difficult car to drive, but it's, uh, it doesn't inspire confidence. You, you really have to ring its neck to get the best out of it. And coming out of that car and getting into the Corolla was like a breeze because this car just goes where you point. It stops when you break. It's, it was brilliant. So I'm, I'm hoping the horse is, is as good, if not better. What, what makes you pick your cars? Do you have a, a sort of strategy that you use? Or? Um, essentially, look, there's, there's lots of different classes in rallying, and I'm not at the pinnacle of the sport now. The pinnacle would be S2000, and uh, that, that's the ultimate. You're looking at a 2 million rand machine that takes probably the same amount of money uh, to, to run for a year. So there's not a lot of privateers that can afford to run S2000 machinery. Most of the machinery are uh, factory, full factory drives and factory equipment. So yeah, um, at the end of the day, it's 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 a budget that, that makes you dictate what class you go into. If you've got the money, you go for the higher class. If you don't have the money, you go with the lower class. Uh, for me, uh, funny enough, I've been stepping down ever since I started riding. I started riding a Subaru, which is the ultimate four-wheel drive machine. Then I went into a, a Toyota uh, Runex, near standard Runex, which is one of the most difficult cars to drive and much much less powerful than. And, uh, which was 1800cc capacity. Now I've gone into an A6, which is a 1600 capacity, but the Group A cars are fully, uh, it's fully modified, unlimited modifications, whereas the Group M is as near standard as possible. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's been, um, I've, I've been stepping down ever since I've started rallying, but it, it seems to be in the right direction. Um, our next step up would be to A7. And um, that's the ultimate front wheel drive car. You don't, you don't get anything faster than that. On the local rally scene, probably internationally also. So yeah, that, that's the next step, and hopefully within a year or two we'll be next. Awesome. Have you ever thought about doing rally driving full time? Is there anything that keeps you back from? The problem is rallying in South Africa is not big enough to to uh, to allow you to do it full time. For one, there's not enough events. Two, uh, rally doesn't pay uh, at this stage in time. Rally costs very uh, good. Even with my sponsor, I still have to contribute an amount for myself. Yeah to be able to, to keep rallying, so uh, it's a situation where we have to um, balance the two essentially between, between working and living. So it's basically the passion for the sport that keeps no, you? No, it's, it's definitely passion. It's, it's, I think rally is, oh, motorsport in general is one of the most passion driven sports. The first rally of the year we bought the Corolla a week before the rally because we realized the running's not going to be ready. My, my crew worked day and night for 10 days with probably a couple of hours sleep and uh, they got the car to, they, they left Pretoria for Durban eight hours before we needed to start the rally. They drove through the night and we got there and I started rallying life. My crews were, were looking at a paycheck and passionate, they wouldn't yeah. put that in. And I in turn had to give them some, you know, recognition, give them a win or whatever it is. Fortunately, we, we, got, we got a second in that rally, which which was great. And I felt, uh, you know, we'd be, we, was the best possible way of thanking them. I was very disappointed that we didn't win, but given the circumstances where I didn't drive the car before the rally, uh, the fact that we were running an underpowered car compared to our com you know, competitors, so yeah, it, it, it was a brilliant result for me. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much for your time, and uh, good luck with your, your rally. Good. Thanks for that. Excellent.